Hello everyone, Dr. Rashish Solanki here. Uh, today we will discuss a, an interesting case uh, who required laparoscopic paraortic retro or retroperitoneal lymph node biopsy. We will discuss the challenges involved and how we used the fluorescence imaging to good effect to uh, simplify the technique. So he is a 57 year old gentleman, incidentally detected uh, retroperitoneal or paraortic lymphadenopathy on ultrasound during evaluation of left inguinal hernia. CT was done to characterize and uh, locate the lymph nodes in relation to the key structures and there was no palpable lymphadenopathy elsewhere negating the possibility of taking biopsy from uh, peripheral nodes. CCT abdomen with pelvis was done and as we can see there is a sizable a lymph node uh, in fact there were multiple lymph nodes um, mainly below the left renal vein and the DJ flexure above the IMA origin it is important to locate this these lymph nodes in relation relation to the um, fixed key anatomical structures so that uh, one can um, dissect around them to identify these lymph nodes and take biopsy they were one to 1.3 to 1 centimeters and the radiologist's impression was that they were likely pathological. Hence, uh, with, the di with this diagnosis, we planned a laparoscopic paraortic uh, node biopsy. However, we knew that the challenges uh, were uh, formidable in front of us in the form of uh, visualization of the node, in a, especially in a patient who has visceral obesity. And therefore, we chose uh, fluorescence or ICG imaging uh, as a tool to locate these nodes. To this end, we injected uh, ICG auto green dye, which was diluted uh, in 10 ml, 25 milligram, and uh, 2 ml each was injected on both sides of the inguinal region. Uh, in the inguinal node actually in the hope that they would be identified well um, intraoperatively when we apply the fluorescence imaging mode. These are the port positions more or less similar to a uh, left col colectomy um, and let us watch the video now. The first step uh, is to expose the root of the mesentery and DJ flexure and hence we place the transverse colon beneath the liver and the small bowel in the right upper quadrant. The DJ flexure and the IMV is visible there. There it is. The assistant grasps the IMA pedicle anteriorly on ICG mode, the lymph node chain is visible very well. A medial peritoneal incision is made. The DJ flexure is mobilized as well. The goal is to expose the lymph node just cranial to the IMA pedicle. The, the nodal chain is getting brilliantly illuminated there. This dissection is similar to the medial to lateral dissection that we perform in a left colectomy. Once we dissect sufficiently in the medial lateral plane, the node becomes visible. There it is. It is appreciated here as a rounded plum colored structure. It lights up brilliantly on ICG mode. We continue to dissect around it in order to excise it for biopsy. The 
aorta is visible in the background, it will be seen well in a while. A visible lymphatic is clipped. There it is, the aorta, the clipped lymphatic and the lymph node. It is excised bit by bit, taking care to avoid injury to retroperitoneal structures, especially the aorta and the lumbar pains. The lymph node is removed bit by bit and is removed in a glove and a bag for biopsy. There it is, a finger glove is made and the lymph node is placed inside to ensure it doesn't break. removed from a 12 mm troca. Post-op close was uneventful. The histopathology revealed it to be tuberculosis and the, although the node was homogeneous and non-necrotic, it would still be tuberculosis what we learned from this. Thank you.